Hello, welcome to the new Apple podcast of 2022-2023. My name is Amir, and my Hi. co-host is... I'm Esther. How are you doing, Esther? I'm good. How are you, Amir? I'm good. I'm excited to get this podcast underway. Today's podcast is about studying habits. We all want the 90s, don't we, oh. Esther? Yep. But we're going to go over tips and tricks and different things that we've learned over our time here at Western that hopefully will help you guys out a bit. So stay tuned if you guys want to listen. On that note, let's get into a little bit of an icebreaker. Esther, give a little yeah. information about yourself. I'm a second year student. I'm going into my second year at uh, Western. I'm in the rehabilitation sciences program. And so I'm going to be doing that. We haven't started any of those courses yet. You take them in third year, but I'm very interested to see how it goes. I don't know much about it yet, but hopefully it's good. What about you? I've heard it's very exciting, the rehab one. It's it's fun. Uh, I'm in uh, fourth year, and I'm doing normal health side, and I'm doing a minor in bio. I might do a major if I'm stupid, but we'll see. (laughs) Might only do a fifth year. But based off that, uh, we both have pretty good experiences in studying for uni. You have the first year experience in that. Yeah. ruling time and yeah. i've been around for a little bit when you came into university were you in covid just a question yes yes uh, so when i came in there was no covid and then uh we went on for a little bit and then i think march hit and uh, chaos yeah okay. all exams canceled and everything we were hyped at that time i remember all the people that i knew oh, were no. hyped and then we got the tail end of all that okay. stuff so yeah yeah well, let's get into it. The first thing we're going to be speaking about is mindset. This is a reading based off of Carol Dweck. And uh, Esther, take it away. Who is she? So Carol Dweck, I'm sure maybe you guys have heard of her. I've recently heard about her in the past few years, just from like people talking about growth mindset. I hear her name pop a lot. So she's basically a psychologist at Stanford University. And she's really widely known for her research on mindset. She pioneered the idea of growth mindset. And more regarding her research, she became very fascinated with the idea of how students' attitude varied when they faced different challenges and um, when faced with failure. So she knows that a lot of children would bounce back very quickly from a lot of their setbacks and on the other hand, some don't. They found that they were like very deeply affected by small setbacks and that kind of gave them burnout, a lot of more challenges and stuff, stuff like that. Um, so Dr. Dweck, she studied thousands of children and through a lot of her research, she finally categorized two fundamental attitudes and them being fixed mindset and growth mindset. So Amir, what do you know about growth and fixed mindset? Honestly, when I first time I read this book, so it was oh. really life changing for me. Yeah, I heard I'm it's a, a long book. book. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it was a it was a life changing book for me. Um, I've been on both tail ends, so I've been on the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. First year when I came into uni, I was a little ignorant, and I was like, "Oh, like uh, fixed mindset. If I do this, blah blah blah, I would, I would do perfect." But no, so. I found that like I needed to shift my mindset. So the problems and issues I, I dealt with in first year was really based off the thick, uh, fixed mindset. And reading this book, she stated a couple of different factors that led to a fixed mindset. One of them being like focus on validation. I felt like every time I would like study, I'm like, okay, I need this 90. And then, you know, you go in and, oh, you need a little bit harder. So like I had to ch- shift my mindset on to like focus on just learning the content. I feel like a lot of uni students do get fixed on the mark and they actually just don't go in the class. Like, oh, let me figure out what they're saying. I Have totally you like, agree. experienced the same thing? Yeah, I yeah. feel like a lot of the time when we think about education now, it becomes more so I need to get a good mark so I can go to a good university and get into a good master's program, do this and that and go on with my career. But I think it's really important to keep in mind that you have to... It's about the learning process as well. And um, those are really good, like, skills that you can learn that you can apply not only just to your academic life, but, like, your social life and just, like, in the future as well. Also, um, just to, like, mention for you guys, if you don't know what fixed mindset and growth mindset is, fixed mindset is basically 
those who believe that our abilities are fixed, they're kind of carved in stone or predetermined at birth. So when you're faced with an obstacle, people with fixed mindsets, they um, they see these setbacks as failure and they don't take these opportunities for growth um, because they think that it's like an innate part of themselves that they can't change. And those with growth mindset, on the other hand, um, they believe that our abilities are traits that can be cultivated with effort and hard work, basically. So they don't see failures and obstacles as reflections of like a permanent inability on ourselves, but rather like a challenge that can be overcome. Um, and it's more of an opportunity to get better at something. Perfect explanation. Uh, a couple of the other points that uh, Carol Dweck went into. Um, one of them was like crack under failure. I think that's another mindset shift that most students should have. As soon as they feel that exam crunch or the midterm crunch and all these assignments and stuff, they start like to panic and crack under the pressure. One of the things like all students, I mean, even adults can do is just to learn to grow. I feel like if you take that mindset difference of, oh, I need to do so much work now. And instead of like, oh, how, how can I be organized? How can I be, how can I ex execute well? How can I um, move smarter and stuff like that, right? We, uh, it just shifts the mindset to less stress on the person and just more stress on like the work per se. So like just get the work done, not to like go back and think about, oh, like this is how I am and this is how it's going to stay. Always allowing yourself to grow. That's like another thing that this whole like book was about. Yeah, I would say that um, for myself, I, I think I have a bit of both. Um, I would definitely say initially I am more of a fixed mindset person because like obviously when we are faced with failure it's kind of shocking in a way that it's kind of like hurtful and so it kind of becomes like shame in a way and that kind of you take it personally but you have to learn that and I feel like with time I get better at you know seeing this past as an opportunity to like make myself better so that this doesn't happen in the future and i'm it's easier said than done of course but yeah of course. i still think it's yeah it was some wise man's word that was like oh um you'll always learn more about yourself when you're in failure than you always learn when you're succeeding it's really oh, true every time yeah. I, yeah every time i face like like failure and stuff not just in like giving a bad march just in life mm -hmm. i learn you learn a lot more about yourself and you like you move on you get up there get strong and get better mm -hmm. Another final thing that I think is important to bring up is uh, one of the fixed mindsets was threatened by other people's success. So if you like start seeing students, especially in first year, I, I felt that like some students were excelling mm -hmm. and some students were also failing. Mm -hmm. And it, just being in like the middle and just seeing the both, like you're like, oh, how are they doing so well? But you got to kind of get out of that mindset and just learn from others. You know, a smart man learns from his own mistakes. A wise man learns from another's. That's like another quote. But you yeah, got a lot of quotes. They're good. Yeah, that's that's gonna be a that's gonna be a um, a theme in this whole podcast. I have a lot of quotes to say, but yeah, I'll it's start very collecting important them to... too. <laughs> um, but it's very important to learn from other people's success. Uh, how do they do this? How, like, how do they schedule their life? How do they study? These things will go much longer than just like, oh my god, I'm so upset that this person got a night. Yeah, and relating back to what you said about like. Um comparison I think that um with such a big transition from high school to university a lot of students find it really hard to adjust to this new environment and especially like workload as well at western mm -hmm. um yeah. it's known that from like in high school to university your grades will drop like 10 percent or something so that oh, I heard 30. that kind of I heard 30 yeah, my, pro my my teacher back then told me 30, and I was just scared from the first day I walked into Western. Oh, man. So I was just studying every day. But she I thought lied 10% me, but... was bad. Yeah, she lied to me, but it's, <laughs> it's whatever. Okay. Um, But, um, yeah, I think it's important to have this growth mindset because um, it's not only just exclusive to academics. Um, I think it can also be practiced in our social lives as well. So far in this podcast, we've been talking about like how to, you know, succeed in school, but like a part of being a student at Western is, you know, having a life here. And that's not just completely um, like mutually exclusive. Yeah, it's not mutually yeah. exclusive. It's 
you have to find yeah, no, balance in your social life as well. And so, um, yeah, I personally didn't have such a growth mindset when it came to this category of like socialization in the first year, because I did want, I came into university wanting to make friends and I thought this would be like a perfect opportunity for me to, but I found that the crowd at Western was a bit too daunting, especially during O week, because, you know, when we move in, we're just like thrust into this new environment. There's so many people. And in O week, you meet so many people that like most of them you'll never see again. And it yeah, exactly. becomes kind of hard to make meaningful connections with people that you just like have 20 second interactions with. So yeah. Yeah. on the other hand, I did see people that managed to make so many friends. And I don't know, it was something that was like, mm, well, I'm just probably bad at socialization. So then it became more of like a comparison thing, which is definitely a trait of fixed mindset. So yeah, but I, I think I've become better at knowing that like, it's it's okay. You don't have to compare yourself to others because you're on yeah. your own path. Comparison is the killer of all joy. Yep. Moving on to the next topic. Have you ever heard of Anki? I I have. I've heard of it once when my sister, she was trying to learn Mandarin. So she mm -hmm. downloaded Anki and learned all the symbols or, or the characters. And she actually learned it very well. And I was, it's similar to Quizlet, right? No. So Quizlet, while you like have a normal flashcard, you write an answer and a question and on the back is the answer. Anki uses an algorithm that's based off space repetition. So the whole idea of Anki is that if you guys search up uh, the audience as well, the forgetting curve, you see an image of um, how much you forget and every time that you relook at something, how much more you retain. So it's just the, basically the whole idea of the forgetting curve is that if you keep going back to it, over time, you're going to forget less and less and less until it becomes like a, a flat line where you're basically at almost 100%. That's the core concept of Anki. Now, I highly recommend Anki. I've been using it for multiple years and it's saved my life more times than I can count, especially with exams of multiple choice. Like you walk in and you feel like you memorize everything and you did because you worked at it. Another core subject about Anki is that it's active recall. You know, when you're just sitting and reading notes, you're not really, you know, you're not using your brain. You're just I've sitting heard there of just active recall notes. before. Yeah. Yeah. So active recall is just like you getting tested, you actually using your brain and like making the machine churn pretty much and using it. And it just, you retain a lot more information. So taking those core concepts, Anki uses an algorithm where if you do, if like you see the answer, you're like, oh, good, easy, hard. And it chooses the amount of days based off that. And over time, if you do it from like day one of school, you write your Anki cards. Also, another thing, when you write Anki cards, you're learning because you're making questions for yourself. You just get really better at like concepts like biology because I've taken a lot of bio courses and like it's great for bio. It's also great for other courses like uh, geology and earth science and stuff like that. So nice. I highly recommend Anki. There's so many YouTube videos out there too that explain how to use it. It's a little bit of a learning curve on how to use the software. Because it's not really like like um, user friendly that way, but it's really easy once you get to know how the system works. Um, what's the difference? Because I always thought of Anki kind of as like like a different version of Quizlet. Because I know Quizlet, they show you something in your flashcard, and then they don't show it for you for a while, and then they bring it back up until you like memorize it, and then you keep on doing that. And they have different ways and different ways to test you. But what's the difference between Anki and Quizlet? The last time I used Quizlet was a while ago, and I knew back then it was just like, oh, you read this flashcard and then it's done, right? Maybe they started using space repetition. It's just Anki was like the first that came out with it. They have a very sophisticated algorithm that they use. It's a free software too on all platforms. And the best example I have is like, is like a Honda Civic versus a Ferrari type of oh thing. My God. They're both cars. I know it's just like the only thing that comes up to my head right now. They're both cars, but one of them just excels at the process. In my personal opinion, Anki just excels at the space repetition and active recall. And okay. also you can use it on the web. The app on the iPhones that they give to pay for, but you don't have to. Just go online, search up Anki login. Once you have your Anki cards, you can do it on the web. And it's free. You have access to it everywhere. I'm going to have to check that out. For I've sure. been in Quizlet so best. far. I think I think Anki Quizlet is good, but Anki just takes it to the it's like professional, you know, you just take it to the next level. 
mm-hmm. Anki is really one of the greatest tools you can use. Getting to the final topic is the most simple one, actually, a calendar. We have been using calendars since the dinosaurs roamed the earth, and they are still very helpful to this day. Um, I also love using calendar. Um, when you mentioned it earlier, I was like, that is that is actually so good. It's It, it sounds simple because, like, it's a calendar. It's too but simple. It's too simple, but it's so helpful. Yeah. I definitely think it's so helpful because I feel like I'm a visual person. And mm-hmm. so when I Me have too. everything on a calendar marked off, and I know which date it is, I can really see how close something is to me. And then that gives you a way to plan ahead. It's like when it, without a calendar, it's like I've done it before too with never using a calendar. It's like life is a blur. Like you just don't know what's like going on every day. But when I started scheduling my life, waking up at this time, getting like my meals in at this time, classes at this time, I start making my calendar like this. First thing I do, I wake up and I go to sleep. And those times I put in the calendar, then I put all my class times and then all the times I have to go get groceries or go to the gym, stuff like that. Stuff that I have to do that's not school. And then after I've done all that, like volunteering, all that stuff, then I started putting in the study blocks. And you honestly find more time to study. You're more efficient. And you just know what life is going on. And then you can schedule next week I have an exam. And then until next week, I can put like three hour blocks in like A, B and C per se. It's really, really, guys, use a calendar. It's the best thing you could do. It's coming from a second year and a fourth year. One of the greatest things you could do is actually, it's the most simple. If you don't do any of these mindsets and Anki, please just have a calendar. Because if you do that, you're organized. You don't have to remember anything when your exams come up. And you have more space in your head to learn. And it's also free. (laughs) Yeah, Apple Calendar right there, Google Calendar. There's so many out there. I like I, Apple because like, I use Apple and it's just all, across all my devices. Nice. I, I use yeah. Google, but it does the same, mm-hmm. basically. I yeah. You were talking about like putting things like scheduled within the day. I, I mark down important due dates and then I have like an agenda. It's like an actual book that I keep with me. Mm-hmm. And then I have one each too. day in the morning, I like write down things I need to complete that day. And it feels mm-hmm. good because, like, throughout the day, if you complete something, you can check it off, and then that way you can visibly see you that you're, that off. yeah, you can see that you're being productive. It's great. Yeah, no, definitely. I think calendars and agendas. You can use an iPad for an agenda. You can use a normal agenda. I, I, I do uh, daily, weekly, and monthly to do lists. Uh, to do this on that day is really good. Weekly is really nice too, and a monthly is just. It's like the smart goals. Remember when we learned that in high school? Yeah, we learned it in well, first year health science yeah. class, right? We also learned it in like elementary school too. Life mate is a full circle. What we're basically saying right now on this podcast too is similar to smart goals. We have uh, specific, attainable, reasonable goals, obtainable, yeah. reasonable goals. So yeah, these things, guys, please take it into account. Um, I hope you guys use a calendar. I Whenever I heard my mom tell me to use a calendar, I'm like, no, bro, no, it's nothing. <laughs> and then I started to learn. I'm like, oh, really? This is the best thing you could do. Nice. So, yeah. I just have sure. a question for you. Um, What is, like, your favorite health side class you've taken so far? Oh, that's actually hard. Because a lot of the health side profs in the upper year are mm-hmm. – really great and are they the same maybe. ones from like first and no. second year oh, okay uh some of them dr shauna burke did you have her first year i had her first year yeah okay so you're gonna see her again hopefully mm-hmm. um this might be a sneak peek into the further um uh, podcast later on but yeah the profs are great i really like uh dr tara mantler's cl- a class of intro to rural economics that one was oh, a rural okay. community sorry well, that I, one was one of the coolest uh, school uh, classes I've taken. Is that third year? Yeah, it's a third year course. Okay. And I, I I was born in a rural area, but I never lived there. Like I just moved like when I was a young kid, and I never knew. So like going back and seeing how my roots work was really cool, and it was just a really cool class to go. Another one, if you really like uh, research papers, is uh, Intro to Health Communications. That's what Dr. Shauna Burke. That one's a cool class too. You get to write a essay. you get to write a paper, like a scoping review or a systematic review. My my paper was actually about uh, COVID nineteen and anabolic steroid use. Oh, okay, yeah. nice. I've only taken three, 
mandatory one so far. Mm -hmm. We're recording this before classes even started. So mm -hmm. I'm interested to see what I have for the future. Yeah. A quick sneak peek to the audience. Maybe in a couple of weeks, you guys will see some of your profs on here. Hopefully, we'll see. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Apple. We're your hosts, Esther. And Amir. And hopefully, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.